So I got kicked out of a screamo band. <laughs> I was the drummer in oh a screamo God. band. Yeah, this is like, I've never really talked about this. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine and me ran this like, stupid campaign for us as homecoming kids. Yeah, what did you even do for that campaign? I want to know. We, it was so stupid. I remember distinctly seeing like the cover for Macintosh Plus's floral shop, like the oh pink my God. one with the Helios statue. I know what you're talking about exactly. Yeah. When I started my sophomore year doing that record, that was when I like fully, like I took oh, wow. two weeks off of class and told my professors I had mono. Yeah. Um, which didn't kill me. It wasn't until the following semester that Damn. I like lost like everything. One of my big regrets mm -hmm. is not being able to like communicate that I was unhappy. Hi, today I'm here with Skylar Spence. How's it going? <laughs> so I was listening to your stuff like way back when, when you were, when I was still in Hong Kong, you were still like St. Pepsi, so it's been a while in the YouTube days also right. where all of your stuff was. But you were born in Long Island, was it? I was born in Baltimore, but lived yeah. on Long Island like my whole life. Oh, wait, so how long did you live in Baltimore? I was there till I was like two or three months old. Oh, so like, I don't much. have any recollection yeah. of it. But uh, then moved to a town called Patchogue in Suffolk County. Yeah. Uh, and then to Farmingville, where I like grew up and spent every yeah. day of my life. So you I, moved for like your parents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my dad is like, uh, he started working on Long Island as like the network administrator for the Suffolk County Library System. Yeah. So I like grew up around computers and Did stuff he, and that's yeah. how I got into making music. And he taught you like, was it like programming or like? Yeah, he taught me like a ton of stuff, not as like complicated as programming, but mm -hmm. he, he had me like on the computer, you know, being able to like download Game Boy games at yeah. like four years old. So, kind of <laughs> weird. And the programs, right? Like, what were you starting on? Yeah, so I started, when I was like in elementary school, there was this program called Anvil Studio, which was basically just like a piano mm -hmm. on the computer. It wasn't anything that I could like really make songs with, but I yeah. used it to learn how to like play piano and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and then my first program was FL Studio that I used um, in middle school and then went to GarageBand, then Logic, yeah. and now I use Ableton. Yeah. So I've used kind of like <laughs> everything. most everything. <laughs> what kind of house did you grow up in? Um, a pretty small suburban house in a mm -hmm. shitty neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Not shitty, just like annoying neighbors. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, I have an, a younger brother, and mm -hmm. it's just me, my mom, my dad, and him, yeah. and we have two cats. Oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> Didn't your parents meet, like, at McDonald's or something, they, like, working there? They worked there? at Burger King. Oh, but Burger like, King, yeah. Yeah, they, they were working there, and uh, I That's think... That's so sweet. How, wait, how old were they? Like, still in high school? Yeah, they were 19 and 20, I want to yeah. say. Or 18 and 19. Somewhere, Damn. yeah, like, super, super young. Yeah. And... That it it was like a very I can't even imagine meeting somebody yeah, like that in, you know? in 2017. Yeah. But I read somewhere it gave you like unrealistic expectations for like relationships. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like they're the couple that like walks around the block holding hands Damn, and stuff. That's and, so cute. And they're just very affectionate and they communicate really great mm -hmm. and it's you know when you you put work in for like 20 years or mm -hmm. whatever and that's what you get out of it it's not yeah. like something that will happen from the get-go so it was just you know something that's that i had to really keep rare in mind. nowadays yeah exactly yeah usually people you know their attention spans aren't yeah long enough to like grasp the idea of like a relationship having yeah. to change how does that change your like perception of like relationships and love um it's made me I guess like be more patient mm -hmm. when I think that there's an issue. I used to be like very, uh, what's the word? If there was like something that bothered me, like one little thing, mm -hmm. I, I could let it like ruin my entire perception of yeah. somebody. Uh, and I've just learned to be like more 
uh, I've learned to temper my expectations mm -hmm. a little more. Yeah. Um, and that that's helped me a lot, like, yeah. learn to, like, be better at mm -hmm. loving and stuff yeah. like that. How would you describe yourself back then? Um, I talked a lot more than I do now. I was, like, the kid that all the teachers hated. Oh, because really? I was, like, always trying to, like, be creative in ways that didn't really yeah. jive with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd always want to, like, make movies starring my class and stuff yeah. like that. And I may have had, like, two big ambitions for, for the things that I actually <laughs> wanted to do. Like what? Um... Like, like the movie or like, like I remember in fifth grade, I had done like an American Idol with all of my Oh my class. God. And I was like, the winner gets like a song that I write for them. <laughs> but I didn't know how to write music yeah. at, the, at that time, you know? So it was like mm -hmm. a stupid, a stupid thing for me to have done. <laughs> okay. What were your favorite subjects back then? Uh, I was big into English. Uh, oh, wow. Like, I loved reading up until I couldn't stand it, mm -hmm. um, which happened, like, somewhere around, like, 8th or ninth grade, yeah. and then I got into history because I have, like, a good memory, and it was easy mm -hmm. for me to do well just by, like, yeah. going to class. What about English made you not stand it? Um, I think when the choices of literature kind of changed, mm -hmm. I was, like, more into science fiction kind of stuff. Right. Than, they lost me around Shakespeare, even though like now I kind of, I get yeah. it more and I enjoy it a lot more. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I was 13 years old, I was like, screw this. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think that you would ever have like a career in history or was it just like a fad type of thing? No, I, I like in a weird way always like just wanted to do this mm -hmm. and it like when I, oh sure thanks <laughs> awesome hey. I was getting a bit thirsty honestly <laughs> is that sponsored like it uh, I guess it is yeah <laughs> we gotta keep this in Herbert's yeah. made <laughs> this is so funny <laughs> so yeah I always of, yeah. wanted to do music history yeah. was like kind of a you know yeah how were you even showed music initially like what did your, did your parents show you did they sign you up for classes um i as far as like music goes like my ability to play and stuff i'm self-taught yeah but my dad is like pretty instrumental no pun intended and in, like getting yeah. me involved with music <laughs> mm -hmm. um he used to let me like play with his record player and he had like a big collection of new wave kind of stuff like duran duran and yeah. new order and all that so I, I grew up like as if music from like 80 to 88 was like happening, mm -hmm. you know? It was like not until I was like four or five years old that I got into like the Spice Girls and then like oh my God. <laughs> punk after that. Yeah. It took me a minute, yeah. you know? But how did you taste. get into all the, you were playing guitar, right? Yeah, I, well I learned how to play guitar um, around ninth grade I was like 14 years old yeah and I just uh my dad had gotten me this guitar that instead of having like a a regular output to go into like an amplifier mm -hmm. it, it had a USB output so oh. I could plug it straight into the computer yeah. um so the way that I learned to like write and play were like it happened you know at the same time yeah how did your band form? So the Cold Napoleons formed um, out of, so I got kicked out of a screamo band. Oh, I was the drummer in oh a my screamo God. band. Yeah, this is like, I've never really talked about this. Mm -hmm. But when I was in ninth grade, I, I was in a screamo band as the drummer, like with some kids in my neighborhood. And we practiced with this, like, electronic drum kit. Yeah. Um, which obviously, like, has a whole bunch of different sounds. So I would always change it to the techno kit and start playing, like, mm -hmm. four on the floor, like, disco kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, then, I don't know, uh, they kicked me out because they didn't dig that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still in contact with any of them? Do they still um, do music? I don't know. They, there's one guy that I have seen, 
a couple times since like ninth grade, mm -hmm. but the rest of them I kind of fell out of contact with. Yeah. But the people that were in my real band, the Cold Napoleons, um, my bassist Scott still plays with me today. Oh, like wow. we've been doing stuff yeah. forever, and he's like my best friend still. How do you describe the cold, uh, the Napoleon music? Um, it is like, hmm, it, it's like if Coldplay was pretty bad at writing oh songs. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but they also listened to a lot of, like, Arctic Monkeys. Okay. Yeah, I, I see that. I was really into, like, British pop music like it was like 2007 2008 so like arctic monkeys were super big for me and i liked like the kaiser chiefs yeah. and all keen and all that stuff yeah so it's like pretty you know not really stuff that i would like vibe to <laughs> today personally but. yeah and in high school weren't you like runner up for like was it uh for homecoming king? yeah homecoming homecoming king yeah a friend of mine and me ran this like stupid campaign for us as homecoming king yeah what did you do for that campaign i want to know we it was so stupid um <laughs> we basically just like started a facebook uh page i guess that's what they are now but um it was like a fan page at first like when it was like become a fan so it was like become a fan of ryan and ashley as like homecoming king and queen and we said that if we got it, we would change the name to Coming King and Coming Queen. Yeah. Like, really stupid, immature, childish oh my God. stuff. Um, but then, you know, to my huge surprise, like, when we got the ballots, yeah. our names were right there. <laughs> and uh, it was so close. It was within an earshot. Damn. I, I still maintain to this day. <laughs> How did you move on from the band phase to, like, St. Pepsi? Um, so... I went to college and I was still doing the Cole Napoleon stuff solo. Oh, okay. And by that time, it changed. Solo? Like from a band and just became one person? Yeah, so it was like always me on records. I, I never really like worked with other people mm -hmm. other than like for live shows and yeah. stuff. And then um, when I got to college, I had never done like a full length album before. So my friend bet me $20 that I couldn't do one oh by the end gosh. of the year. I did it, and it was awesome, and I was like, I want to make albums for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, around that time, I got into Vaporwave. Yeah, how did from, that like, even... Like, I, what did you hear, where did you hear it from initially? I wish I could tell you. I remember distinctly seeing like the cover for Macintosh Plus's floral shop like the oh pink my god one with the helio statue <laughs> I know what you're talking about exactly yeah I saw that everywhere and it's clicked and I loved I loved the album cover but I remember I listened to like three or four times and I was like I don't get this at all this is like so stupid and then around like the fifth time that I gave it a listen I was like okay this is actually the best thing that's ever happened Damn. to me and now I got really into the idea of like looping something 8,000 times because you kind of like lose how that part works in the context of the song mm -hmm. and it just becomes like a whole thing of its own. Yeah. You get like kind of lost in the different way that the parts will interact over like just four bars of music mm -hmm. and that was like really exciting to me, you know, yeah. it was like... I finally had to pay attention to how a song yeah. is arranged and, yeah. and layered and stuff like that. But previously, you, you didn't really listen to like more like electronic stuff, I guess. Not, not particularly, no. I was like mostly into anything I read about on Pitchfork, mm -hmm. like in high school. Yeah. Um, I didn't really get into electronic music until I started. Like, I kind of accidentally fell into a a community for it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, after high school, were you super sure that you wanted to do, like, go to college? That was something your parents wanted you to do, or did you want to do it? They definitely wanted me to do it um, more than I wanted mm -hmm. to do it. Um, I went because when I grew up, they were, it was kind of like, if you don't go to school, like, yeah. you're 
dumb. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not because, like, you actually want to pursue a different passion. Yeah. Um, I think that they, if I would have been more upfront with the fact that I thought that I could really make a career out of it, they mm -hmm. would have, they would have definitely believed yeah. in me, but probably pressured me to audition for like Berkeley or yeah. you know a real music school yeah. how far how far on were you back then with your music career like after graduating high after school? graduating high school I had I mostly wrote songs for like extra credit for for classes that yeah. I didn't do my work in and stuff <laughs> um, so I, I wasn't really thinking like oh I'm gonna write music for a yeah. living. It was something that I loved thinking about doing, mm -hmm. um, but I never actually, it, it wasn't a serious yeah. thought of mine until I started doing St. Pepsi and I saw like, yeah. you know, write-ups in Japan and stuff. I how, was like, how okay. old were you when you started St. Pepsi? Uh, I was 19. Okay. When I started yeah. St. That's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> this December will be the five year anniversary Damn. of that. So how did how did you even get yourself out there? Did you like send stuff to blogs or like not at all? And, and that that's yeah. what the weirdest thing yeah. was was I literally just put the music on Bandcamp uh, with the tag Vaporwave and oh, so the tag. all that stuff. Yeah, I said that my like location was Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Like that's where I was making music yeah. and just like a bunch of dumb things and eventually like not four days after me putting out my my first couple mixtapes yeah. um i read a blog called hi hi woofy which mm -hmm. is like a japanese experimental yeah. music blog that's so crazy and they were like yeah this is uh they called me the future of music and i was like <laughs> Well, I guess I've got to, like, continue. Yeah, now you have pressure because of that Japanese vlog. Exactly. It, it was, like, a, oh my God. a really good source of inspiration yeah. for, for me to continue yeah. doing that, you know. What did you study at BC? I was a poli-sci major, yeah. which... I guess that's kind of similar to, like, you were curious in, like, history and stuff. Yeah, I was a kid who, like, got good grades in history, so I thought that, like, political science was yeah. a good idea. Because I also was like really into things that were going on politically and around that time like oh. Occupy Wall Street and yeah. crap like that. Where do you get that from? Were your parents also really like into the political stuff? Um, in a way, yeah. I think that I also got into it because most of my friends at high school were Oh. were into it. Were you like, in those like school organizations too? Like yeah. Like debates and stuff? Uh, I didn't debate but we did take like there was an elective yeah. called uh, government and politics and then there was a comparative government and politics class too and I took both of those. Yeah. Um, and that was you know half because I wanted to learn things to talk about with my friends <laughs> and half because I wanted to yeah. be with my friends. Yeah. You know? Were you able to see, like, a career, like, if it wasn't for music, you would do, like, political-related? I thought for a while if I was yeah. going to do anything politically, I could do, like, speech writing. Um, yeah, because, I mean, you like the English also. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea of communication when yeah. it's not completely, yeah. you know, haywire. Mm -hmm. So, that's... That's what I thought at the time. Like I yeah. could do, I could never be a campaign manager because I'm the most disorganized person that's <laughs> ever lived. But I could definitely like write a speech in favor or against yeah. something and have it Damn. be convincing. You that's know? that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> How much into BC were you until when you started becoming unhappy? Oh, I hated BC from like day one. Damn. Um, but why did you go to BC then? Because it was the best school I got into. Yeah. I just thought you're I mean, supposed to really go good, yeah. to like the best school academically. Yeah. I did well on my SATs, but like had pretty not great grades. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of amazing that I had gotten in there at mm -hmm. all. I also sent them like a CD of music that I made. Oh wow. So I don't know if that factored into it or yeah. anything. But uh, yeah, I made a good group of friends like six or seven friends my first semester at BC and then 
maybe like two or three more the entire time I was yeah. there, like good friends, mm -hmm. you know. It was not the most fruitful place for mm -hmm. me socially and I kind of uh, went a little cuckoo. What about BC didn't you like? Everybody came for money mm -hmm. and there were a lot of legacy kids. Right. Um, people, and it might have been like me too because I can be kind of, I don't do great with first impressions mm -hmm. typically. So I think I might have came off a little weird at like my orientation and stuff and people just weren't really trying to be my friend. I guess it was also just like, I mean, it's not a really creative school. No, so it that's attracted also like a, a different thing. type of people that would have been your friend and like doesn't really make music. Yeah, it, it turned out that like most of my friends at BC were super creative and also shared my yeah. hatred of the place. Yeah. Did you, were you able to meet people from other schools or? Uh, not necessarily, but not because I couldn't, yeah. just because I was like a pretty isolated kid. Yeah, actually same because I went to Northeastern. Oh, cool, cool. And so like, I actually like, it's crazy because I was like, oh, Boston's such a college school. But actually, yeah, I yeah, never yeah. met, I rarely met people like from other schools, unless it's like, I was like doing photography club. Like that was about it. I never met anyone from BC. Uh huh. So yeah, it's kind I never of met like, anybody from Northeastern until yeah. like after, you know. Yeah. I left. Yeah. That's super weird. And you miss, you started like skipping class and stuff, right? How, like, <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't know. It, it sort of, it started before I had gotten, like, I think I was just as irresponsible as like any normal kid would be. Um, like, just, <laughs> just that was awesome. <laughs> um, like there was a calculus class that I had to take, but I had already taken AP calculus mm -hmm. uh, at high school, so I thought that I didn't have to go and I would just like be able to do well on the tests and yeah. stuff, but it was different and not great and that was like the first thing. Mm -hmm. But then when I started my sophomore year doing that record, that was when I like fully like I took oh, wow. two weeks off of class and told my professors I had mono. Yeah. Um which didn't kill me. It wasn't until the following semester that Damn. I like lost like everything. Were you just um, like you were just like doing music until like early in the morning, wake up at like three PM. Three PM on a good day, yeah. Um so you're just like I guess like really like you just couldn't stop yourself like making music and Yeah, when I got into there. Ableton and I learned about sampling, like I had never thought about really like taking up an already made song mm -hmm. and like constructing it into something different until like 2013. Yeah. So it was around that time once it was like breaking into a new piece of the puzzle, you yeah. know? So all I wanted to do was like figure that out. Yeah. You know? And your parents were pretty shocked. How did they like hear about it? Um, well, they heard about it when I, uh, when I didn't go to my structure of the universe final and my dad called and was like what's up and I was like I'm gonna probably fail four classes um, so they had no idea before no and that's one of my big regrets mm -hmm. is not being able to like communicate that I was unhappy and wanted yeah. to do different things mm -hmm. with my life than yeah. you know then get a degree and mm -hmm. work an office job yeah. or whatever but so you quit and then you started doing music full time or yeah so for a semester because my parents were like you're not gonna like just stay at home and do yeah. nothing so they made me go to this performing arts school called five towns mm -hmm. uh, on long island to learn music production oh and wow it was kind of the same deal as bc i would like my dad had this thing in our car for insurance where mm -hmm. he could like see when it was driven and stuff Damn. and where it was driven to. Yeah. So I would drive my car to school and just like sit in the car and make music instead yeah. of like going and doing what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And that was like a really stupid thing because I could have just like probably learned something about yeah. anything. Uh, but yeah, 
Um, How did they become supportive of their music? Well, they always supported, they were always like fans mm -hmm. of what I did. Like they always liked what I did. It was more, they didn't see, they didn't know that it was possible to like break into music if unless you knew somebody. Yeah, I guess they're just like not in, well, most parents are not even really in the industry. And I got, I got really lucky too, you know, it's not like, like I'm aware that, that things worked out really well for mm -hmm. me, um, for like a really long time. And I don't think that they anticipated that, mm -hmm. you know, once they saw the window yeah. open up, they were like, go for it, you wow. know, it, it didn't, what it was didn't it take that convincing. they saw? Like, did you have a big show or? They saw, yeah, I started getting college gigs mm -hmm. uh, around like late 2013, early 2014. Yeah. Um, and those tend to pay better mm -hmm. than, you know, if you're like, I did a lot of free shows in New York yeah. opening up and they were like, well, you know, how are you going to make a living playing all these free shows? Yeah. So. They saw the college shows, and then once I started like singing on my songs and oh, stuff, yeah. uh, like once I did Fiona Coin, mm -hmm. they were like, oh, like you didn't stop writing songs. Yeah. They didn't really get the whole vaporwave thing right. at all. Yeah. So it took a little bit of pop music yeah. making to, to properly convince them. And actually going back a bit, you were on like the BC radio, right? For some of your mm -hmm. songs. Yeah, I was, I was the music director uh, my sophomore year and I convinced everybody to let me open up. Like my first gig was opening for our spring concert. Oh wow, <laughs> that's and huge. Yeah, I never, I never touched an MPD before. Like I, I didn't know how to play a live mm -hmm. show and it was stressful, but like it was also like one of the best experiences of my life being yeah. able to go up and do the stuff that yeah. I was proud of, you know. Were you kind of known in BC then for your music? Not at the time, no, but I, I did go back a couple of times, like, mm -hmm. to play BC spring yeah. concerts and stuff, and then people would show up, like, people who I never really, like, talked to oh my or God. anything that were like, oh, like, we're, we're so glad that you're doing the music thing. People yeah. seemed to let on that they were, they knew beforehand, yeah. you know? Like, they were like, oh, we always knew that was going to happen. And yeah. I was like, really? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't and neither did anybody else. <laughs> How did um, Pepsi approach you about your name? It was right after Fiona Coin came out. Um, we also printed these shirts that had the a disco ball in Pepsi colors. Mm -hmm. And around that time, they sent me an email asking if they could speak to my manager because they wanted to get on a friendly conversation. They said they liked Fiona though, right? Yeah, they, they were like very nice about the actual music. They, their concerns were that if I went on, on stage and said, you know, smoke weed every day or oh, something like that, yeah. that people would confuse my, my sponsor yeah. with the sponsorship of Pepsi yeah and so they were like we can't that's like a liability and you've already like made the the shirt so mm -hmm. we know that you're doing this yeah. for about us yeah and I was like all right I guess they let me uh, I had a tour booked for December in Europe and it was my first time playing in Europe oh, damn. so they allowed me to like do that tour and then come home and immediately oh, change my name yeah. so and you had a few like uh, choices but didn't your mind just like St. Gatsby or something yeah that was like something that I was like thinking for like an album like the great Gatsby is my favorite book yeah and I love like the imagery and stuff and I always wanted to kind of incorporate that into my sound. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you know, you should change your name because it's like, it's, you'll have the saint still. Yeah. And I was just like, I just hated it the more that I thought about right. it, you know. Um, How did you land on Skylar then? Skylar came from my favorite St. Pepsi song, 
um, like I named a song on Hit Vibe Skylar Spence, and uh, that name came from a Woody Allen movie. Mm -hmm. Like there are these two characters who like end up uh, getting married, and it's Holden Dandridge or Holden Spence and Skylar Dandridge. So I just kind of took her name, yeah. what she her name would be if she married him yeah. at the end after the movie mm -hmm. uh, and that's how Skylar came about. Yeah. How do you think your music has changed since you started putting out your original songs like your first songs on Saint, through St. Saint Pepsi? I got a lot crazier with with my own sound design mm -hmm. like with St. Pepsi it was easy because it made anything from scratch which was a big help um, so when I started you know when I signed to a label you don't have as much leeway yeah. with sampled material as you would if you were just like putting stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, so I've tried to make sounds that are akin to something that you would hear in a mm -hmm. sampled thing. Yeah. Like just throw a ton of effects on it, export it, put it back in, and sample it as though you found it on YouTube, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's how. That's how the sound has kind of changed. It's it's the same in that way, yeah. but like, the, it's a different approach to how I right. get there, you know? Yeah. And I sing and stuff. Yeah. How do you think you've grown personally since you started putting out music? Um, I'm not nearly as mean about other people's music. Oh, yeah. I used to be like, like this douchey critic kid who like thought yeah. that, you know, I knew everything about music. And once I like, once I started getting familiar with how writing a song mm -hmm. can kind of happen anytime in yeah. any sort of way, like, like I just have a lot more appreciation for the art of the song and like how people connect to it. So yeah. I feel like it's not my place to to yeah. talk shit on other artists or like people who like other types of music, um, yeah. and that's. That's been good for me. Mm -hmm. I'm generally like a lot more anxious too because I've never had to like be a person mm -hmm. for people before. Yeah. Like somebody that I talk to fans after like the shows all the time. Yeah. And it's it's taken me a minute to like get used to that. That like people have this idea of what I do and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I love it. I love yeah. that there's anybody that that cares at all about my music, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. Last question. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered for? Um, I want to be remembered for being a really good friend. <laughs> Mo more than anything, I, I think that if my music had any lasting power, yeah. that would be great. Um, but I also acknowledge that like once the last copy of a vinyl is burned and like mm -hmm. all, you know, hard drives are burned up, like music's as impermanent as, as anything, but it's mm -hmm. all about like how you affect people. Yeah. So I want people to, you know, think that I wasn't a shithead. <laughs> oh my God, no. You're so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.